Good morning. We welcome all of our members, guests, and visitors who have come to worship with us today as we celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We will be taking up a second collection today for the food bank. And now please stand and join in singing our gathering hymn, God is Here as We His People. celebrate in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Good morning, everyone. God is here. God is truly with us. We just proclaimed in song what we will celebrate now in prayer with the word of God and the Eucharistic presence of the Lord, truly we celebrate that God is here. Let's take a moment now to prepare ourselves for this great celebration of our faith. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You pardon, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And now we proclaim glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, 
who founded all the commands on your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor. Grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to obtain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him for the hands of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. But the wisdom from above all is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconsistency or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace, for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet but do not possess. You kill and envy but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask but do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. 
the word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him and three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down called the twelve and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child, just as this in my name, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives not me, but the one who sent me. Gospel of the Lord. As we gather this morning, we come to the house of God. It's hard to believe that we hear those words, the Mass has ended, go in peace, to love and serve the Lord, to glorify the Lord with our lives. Before you know it, the week is over, we're back again. Time seems to go so very quickly for us. They tell me that happens when you get older, but I know that it's for many of us it always happens. So we have to take advantage of each and every day, celebrate every day to the fullest in the journey. And I think the events, as I said of last weekend, reflecting back at 20 years ago on 9-11, how true that is. Celebrate every day. Wake up in the morning, tell the young people many times, just ask God to make this be the best day. It's not a hard prayer to remember. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice. We are glad to celebrate it. Beautiful words in that Easter season. So we welcome anyone who may be visiting with us today, but always at this Mass, it's with great joy to welcome those who join us on our live stream in their homes. Again, we especially remember those who are homebound and can't be with us, but I know would long to be with us, that you are with us truly in prayer today. 
they, we glorify the Lord together. You know, it's around that time of the year when we also are thinking about beginning a, the journey for those who are searching in their life for faith. Our RCIA, our Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults, in many of our parishes, starting. And it is not only the ministry of those involved in the program, but it's, it's our ministry. We're called as disciples of the Lord, celebrating our faith here today, living out our baptismal call, to be others who invite someone to come and see, come and experience, come and discern. Maybe someone we know in our neighborhood, and maybe someone we work with, maybe a family member. Sometimes uh, maybe just been away from the faith or didn't have that formal journey of the faith experience to an initiation and come together with us. Deacon Mike works a lot with our RCIA, and I think he'd be the first to tell us, as I believe, that oh, those who work with the program of bringing people into the church it's a teaching experience for us, too. So many things that we take for granted, and we just do it. Those are the questions that people coming into the church asked. Why do you do this? Why do you do that? I noticed somebody doing this. One of those things we just did before Deacon Mike proclaimed the gospel. We made the sign of the cross on our forehead, on our lips, and over our heart. We just do it. I looked out and watched all of us. Sometimes we wonder, did I do that? Did I forget to do it? It's just a habit of what we do. But someone who is not part of the tradition or not grown up in the Catholic Church may wonder what we're doing because they may see some people moving their lips. And the traditional prayer with that was, may the Lord be in our minds, on our lips, and in our heart. May the good news be there, because that's exactly what follows that gesture of hearing the gospel message proclaimed. And we do pray that the good news of the gospel is certainly in our minds, and we reflect upon the good news that we hear, not only just on Sundays, but the opportunity to read on our own. We allow it to be in our minds, and so many times I say, may it echo in our hearts too. But we pray, God, that the good news that we hear can come from our lips, too, as we live our faith and share our faith, invite others to the faith. We love to hear good news. And today, in the Gospel reading, we are not hearing, as we have been for the past many weeks, a miracle stories, healing stories, feeding of the many, teaching of the many that are with the Lord. We're hearing the Lord begin a journey. We heard that he was in Caesarea Philippi, he left there last week. There was a safety there. Jesus and his disciples now leave from there and begin their journey to Galilee. But the interesting part in that first sentence, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. We've heard something similar to that in people that had been touched by the Lord's healing experience. Don't tell anyone. We reflected upon that. The Lord wanted a true conversion of heart, not just jump on the bandwagon because everybody's doing it, jumping in and following Jesus, but to have a true conversion of the heart. But today, unlike the readings we've been hearing from Mark for these past few weeks, Remember, it was so hard for Jesus to get away. He'd jump in a boat, go on the other side of the shore, there'd be people there. Try to go to a deserted place, and people would find him. Sometimes, even before the Lord got there, people arrived. They didn't need the internet or telephones or cell phones. Word got out quickly. But some spiritual writers wonder why he did not wish anyone to know about it. My dear friends, we are reminded, and I believe that's what our spiritual writers remind us, that this is an important time for the Lord to be with his close companions. Those who are going to continue his work, a great teaching moment for them. But other spiritual writers may say, thinking about what we had heard these past few weeks, 
that some of the teachings of the Lord were difficult for people to hear. Remember a few weeks ago we heard that many began to leave the Lord, especially in those bread of life readings. Unless you eat of my body, drink of my blood, you do not have life within you. That was tough for people to hear. How could he say that? Then last week, we heard that he was saying, you know, what are people saying about me? He wanted to know. Remember how kind the disciples were, the apostles were. Oh, some say you're a prophet, some say Elijah. But we know that some of the people were saying, is he truly a prophet? How can he say what he's saying? I think he's off the wall. Some thought he might have been crazy. They weren't telling Jesus that that's what they heard, but Jesus also knew that's what people were saying. And some were saying the numbers of the Lord's followers were dying off. Remember what he even says to the apostles, do you want to go too? Peter says, where are we going to go, Lord? You have the words of everlasting life. Then Jesus goes on to teach them. The Son of Man is to be handed over to the men who will kill him. Three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. Here we hear they did not understand the saying. They were afraid to question him about it. It's another strange line, I believe, in the Gospel today. Not only did he not want people to know where he was going, but now the disciples are afraid to even question him. Some remind us they didn't like what they were hearing, that he'd be leaving them. They needed him. They had no idea what he was speaking about. People are accepting you, Lord. Yes, yeah, some people don't like the idea what some of the things you're saying. You're asking us to forgive one another. You're asking us to be there as a community, take care of one another. And now you're saying you're going to leave us. And then they continue the journey. They get to Capernaum. And once inside the house, the Lord began to ask them some even more questions. And the big one, he says, what were you guys arguing about on the way? Even though there was a group following the Lord, he must have known that something was going on, a conversation. What were you arguing about along the way? Again, but they remained silent. Why? <laughs> Pretty easy. They didn't want to admit to the Lord what they were talking about. It would go against what he was trying to teach them. I have come to serve and not to be served, was the Lord's message. So many times when they wanted to make him a king, he went away. He was not worried about who the greatest among them were. But they were. They were arguing about it. That's why they were afraid to tell him. They had been discussing, yes, along the way, who was the greatest. Then he sat down and called the twelve, his closest companions, and said to them, if anyone wishes to be first, they have to be last of all and the servant of all. That's what I've been telling you. That's what I've been trying to live out. That's what you have to understand. If you're going to take on and continue the mission, you are a servant to one another. Not to be honored, put on a pedestal. He brings the little child in their midst, childlike faith. It says to them, whoever receives this child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me, receives not only me, but the one who sent me, God our Father. And so, my dear friends, we don't have a lot of healing stories taking place in the readings today, where thousands gather together to eat a few loaves of bread and several fish. But we do have good news. There are still miracles taking place. The hearts of the disciples of the Lord were changed. In this experience with the Lord, they began to understand a little bit deeper what was going to happen along the way. Peter tries to tell the Lord, don't talk that way, remember that? Get behind me, Satan, we heard. Rough words from the Lord. 
What does the scripture say for us today? What is our thoughts? And allowing the word of God and to remain in with us throughout the week. There are those who argue today who's the greatest. There are those who are more concerned about being the greatest and put on that pedestal than to be of service to one another. Honestly, we have to all admit in some way we all have that experience. We want to be the best at our work, the best in our school. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with healthy competition. But if we lord something over someone, make us others feel down because we make ourselves be so great, that's not being Christian. It's not what the Lord is telling us. We are reminded by the Lord to be like children, not childish, but childlike in faith. Some people make faith so difficult. Sometimes that's an understanding why some people say, well, I'm not sure I want to have join a church. So many restrictions. We invite people to please come. It's a place for us to come and be refreshed each and every weekend. Again, St. James, in our second reading, like last weekend, gave us some thought, gave us something really to think about during the week. Because last week we were told that we must become like the Lord to be a good Christian, following his ways, not worrying about who's the greatest. Last week, James reminded us that faith and good works go together. With faith, good works automatically come, and they should, and they do. James today gives us something also to think about. My dear friends, he speaks to the people at that time, and he speaks to us. Where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and foul practice. But the wisdom from above is, first of all, pure, peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy, and of good fruits, without inconsistency or insincerity. <laughs> Thank you, James, for giving us some insight of what we need to reflect upon in our life to be more Christ-like. But they're tough. It's tough to be pure. It's tough to be peaceable. It's tough to be gentle. Sometimes it's difficult to have mercy and good fruits if we try to do it alone. But we know if we try to do it with the Lord, all things are possible. Purity, peace, gentleness, mercy, love, forgiveness, Thank you, St. James, for your reading today. And so, my dear friends, we have the Word of God today, and yes, maybe it's not some of the healing stories we're used to, but miracles are still taking place. A change of heart, real maybe a vision for the disciples of the Lord and for us. And so, may we this week, as disciples of the Lord, Keep the Lord in our minds. Keep the Lord in our hearts. And when we do that, as we bless our minds, our hearts, and our lips, we could give praise and glory to God in all that we do and all that we say. We together build up the body of Christ. Together we are stronger, a community of faith. May God bless the good works as we hear that he has begun in us, in baptism and in our faith journey. Let's all stand now to profess the faith we pray we could live. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, my dear friends, together we place prayer in need before our God that the Church and its leaders will model the self-sacrificial love of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. That leaders of nations will strive tirelessly for peace and justice, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. That our parish may grow in holiness through the graces of the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. That we may receive Christ through childlike eyes, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. That we may always serve all of God's children, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For those who are sick and those listed in our church bulletin, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all who have died, especially for Michael Walker, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Yes, Father, we do ask that you hear all the prayers that we as a community have placed before you, not only with our lips, but from the depth of our hearts. Help us well, throughout this week. Help us to hear the response to our prayer throughout this day, every day, these days that you have made for us. All this we ask through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body the blood of Christ, we may be gathered together into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Larry, our Bishop, all who shared their life in the church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, thanks. Peace, thanks. Peace, Mary, thanks. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you, remain with you forever and ever. Amen. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a reminder, always take home a bulletin. Uh, some of the announcements are coming up. Some RCAI details. Uh, our Alpha program is beginning soon. But also today after Mass, directly outside, the bottom of the steps just for the right, is a continental breakfast. 
So uh, we invite all of you to please help us. There's donuts and fruit and toast and toasters and all kind of goodies that are out there today. So it's good to get together. We thank God that it's a beautiful day for us to gather together in here, but also outside. Enjoy the week, everyone. Thanks. Difference. Go make a difference.